let's talk about vectors. And uh, hopefully some of you have heard this uh, word before. Actually, if you just, you know, when you're watching different movies and whatnot, I actually hear this word quite frequently, it's, uh, especially when you hear uh, like the air traffic controllers talking to airplanes or whatnot. Just pay attention. You'll hear this word <laughs> all, all, all over the place. Of course, me being a math guy, I pick up on different math terminologies all the time. But you'll hear things like, oh, vector in this direction or et cetera. So you may be familiar with this word. I'm pretty sure you probably heard it somewhere, okay? But uh, vectors are extremely important in mathematics and in science, and they uh, solve tons of practical problems. I'm going to uh, uh, basically give you a super basic introduction to vectors. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so what is this little thing right here? I'm talking about vectors, and I got this little guy right here. Well, this little arrow is a representation of a vector, all right? Let's talk about this arrow, but before we do so, let me give you some basic terminology. So we have things called scalar quantities, and I'm gonna talk about this in just one second, and then we have these other guys over here called vectors, and this is what we wanna know about. But in order to really understand vectors, I gotta understand scalar quantities, okay? So what is this uh, scalar quantities? Well, best way to describe Scalar quantities is just to give you an example. So maybe like 20 pounds, okay, it's a scalar quantity. Uh, let's see here, 70 miles per hour. So a scalar quantity is just a uh, number. It just has one unit of, of, of measure, okay? That's basically uh, a scalar quantity. No, you're like, all right, that's, you know, I, I see these uh, type of uh, numbers with units of measure all the time. Well, that's called scalar. All right, what's the difference between that and a vector? Well, again, vectors, we uh, represent by little arrows, okay, like this, all right? And vectors have uh, a scalar component to them, something like this, but they have something else that make, uh, makes them um, a vector, and that is direction. So vectors have both scalar and direction. All right, so they're directional and they have a, a particular magnitude to them. So uh, maybe something like uh, this would be an example of a vector. 400 miles per hour um, at uh, 0, 070 degrees. Okay, so this is our direction and this right here is our magnitude or our scalar component. So vectors are very specifically, they have direction and a magnitude. Now. We can kind of think of this in all kinds of different ways. So let's uh, draw a little x, y plane here. And the application of vectors are literally like infinite, okay? Let me uh, see if I can draw this a little better. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm kind of doing this a little bit on the fly because you know it's not a formal lesson on vectors, but I want to make a nice, neat little x, y plane here. Okay, but uh, instead of x, y, let's give this uh, like north, south, uh, east, and west. Okay, so let's say an airplane is going 200 uh, miles per hour at uh, 0, 040 uh, degrees, or 0, 4, 5 degrees. So the way it works, north is 0 degrees, east is what? It's 90 degrees this way. Uh, south is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees, and then this would be 360 or zero degrees would be due north, all right? So this is the way it works with the compass. So if an airplane is going, let's say zero, four, five degrees, that would kind of be split the difference, at 200 knots, okay? Maybe this would be an arrow. It's emanating right here. This is called, a, we call this a position vector, but we're gonna represent this arrow like this, okay? Now, how about an, uh, an airplane that's going, let's say 120 degrees, but it's going 400 knots. What would that vector look like? Well, it, you can see here, this is going 040. 120 degrees is over here, but if this is 200 knots, well, this vector is gonna be double the length. Okay, so maybe something like this. Okay, 
So this would be this vector right here, all right? And this would be this vector right here. So the length of the vector is, in fact, its scalar component, okay? So you see how that works? So here there's 200 degrees, and it's smaller, all right? So the actual physical length of the arrow, okay, it represents the magnitude, and then wherever the uh, arrow is actually pointing is, in fact, its actual direction, okay? So these are vectors. Now, how do we represent vectors? There's all kinds of ways we can represent vectors. Uh, oftentimes, they'll look like this, like 3, 8. We use this little notation. There's um, I and J notation, but this is more advanced stuff. But just so you know, that's what a vector is, okay? It represents, there's uh, direction and magnitude, right? And we kind of represent it like this uh, on this uh, north, south, east, west little uh, compass. Now, what good are vectors? Well, let's do a quick little problem here, okay? Now, let's say I have this little uh, boat, and let's say it's not so little, but let's say it's going 20 knots, okay? And it's going due east, all right? Let's say it's right here, and in, uh, in this uh, river, okay, as this boat's going down this river here, there is a cross current, okay, it's going this way, of five knots, okay, and it's due north, okay? Now, let's just think about this. If I have a cross current going this way, and it's due north, and this boat is going due east this way, well, what's going to happen to the actual movement of the boat? Is it going to continue going like this? No, it's not, right? It's going to kind of drift off in this direction. It's going to end up going like this, correct? Because that current is uh, pushing it, right? So how do we know the actual direction it's going to end up and how fast? This is going to affect its speed as, as well, right? If I have this cross current, it's going to affect the speed. Well, this is a, a type of problem that we can use vectors to uh, solve. So let's go ahead and do this now by doing a little vector addition. Okay, now, so you remember, we can uh, represent vectors with uh, arrows, okay? So this is due east, and so this is, obviously, this is east, this is north, this is west, and this is south. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow right here, uh, 20 knots due east, so I have what they call like an initial uh, starting point to that arrow, and I'm gonna go out 20 and I'll make my little arrow just like that. Okay, so this is 20 knots and the arrow is pointing in the right direction. It's pointing east. Now if this arrow's length represents 20, what do you think my arrow for my five knots is going to be? Well, it's going to be one fourth. Okay, let this be like 5, 10, 15, 20. So my five knots arrow is only going to be like this long. Okay, so and it's going to be going in what direction? It's going to be going north like this, all right? So this could be my five knots vector, all right? Again, uh, has a magnitude and direction. But I want to do something called vector addition. And this is where vectors uh, solve so many problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little arrow, and I'm going to take its starting point, that little starting point, and I'm going to... Uh, Put the, the end of one vector, this vector here, you're going to put the starting point of it right there, okay? This is what we call vector addition. So it's going to be just like this, all right? Of course, I'm sketching this out. It's not super precise. But here is my five knots vector, okay? And it's going due north, all right? So that's going north. This is my 20 knots vector. This is representing the boat. So how, you know, how is this going to help us out? Well, if we look here, okay, the beginning of this vector to the tip of that second vector, we have another vector. Okay, you see that vector right there I just drew in yellow? This is what we call the resultant vector. Resultant, resultant, hopefully I don't misspell that. That's the resultant vector. And what do you think that represents? Well, in fact, that represents the actual uh, direction that boat is going to go with this cross current. All right, so this angle right here, We'd have to figure that out. How could we figure that out? Well, we'd have to use some basic trigonometry, okay? But it's not that difficult to get that actual angle. And then uh, how fast is it gonna be going? Well, we would have to uh, determine the length of that. Now, if this was an actual cross current, so uh, so this would be um, formed at a 90 degree angle. We, we could actually use uh, Pythagorean theorem here 
to get the length of this arrow. But the length of this arrow is going to be the um, actual uh, speed of this boat. Okay, it's going to be the actual result of speed. You know, not the five, not the 20 knots. It's uh, we had this five knot cross current. So if we look at it. We're like, okay, this is going to be what? Is it going to be longer or shorter? Well, it you can see this is a right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. So this boat is actually going to be going a little bit faster than 20 knots. But at what direction? Well, we need some uh, basic trigonometry to solve that. But these, uh, this is a good little basic example of vectors and problems. And that's why, you know, you do need to have a little bit, um, I don't want to say super advanced, but you got to have some working knowledge of trigonometry. Of course, there are or more sophisticated uh, vector problems called like the dot product and all this kind of stuff. But they are like so, 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 so important. I can't even overemphasize how important, how widely used vectors are, especially like in physics and motion problems, engineering, um, absolutely uh, everywhere. But I'm going to kind of uh, wrap it up at this point because this is the essence of vectors. If you were just remember, hey, a vector has a magnitude and direction. We can solve problems by using what we call vector addition, where we can have a resultant vector. Uh, this is this is a good start for you. Okay. Now, if you continue to learn math, of course, I don't know what math level you're in, but you'll start learning stuff about vectors. Well, maybe like in algebra two, maybe in some geometry, but certainly like in a more advanced class like uh, pre-calculus. So if you are interested in learning vectors at a more advanced level, my pre-calculus course, I get into vectors pretty heavy duty. But um, again, if you um, are ever planning on taking uh, science like uh, physics, physics is, uh, physics is like such an awesome uh, course. I have a degree in mathematics, I have a master's degree, but I'll tell you, if I, if I didn't go into uh, mathematics, I would have went into physics because physics is is awesome. It's just like an application of mathematics. So I would really encourage you, if you like math, definitely take physics. And if you take physics, you're going to be doing vectors like crazy. But anyways, listen, if you like this video, if this was somewhat kind of informative, well, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please uh, consider subscribing. But uh, it's my goal, my mission to try to teach math, uh, really try to explain it in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have tons of stuff here for you. But my, my uh, best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.